up, anglers? Uh, today is something a little different. I had the opportunity to uh, take out a Kaku Wahoo, which is the new 12 and a half foot kayak from Kaku. Uh, it's an open cockpit design, which is just the type of kayak that I like. So uh, it's always fun and exciting to take a new boat out to see how it handles. And uh, looking forward to the opportunity to do this. So uh, without further ado, let's um, hook back up and get on the water. Tie lines. All right, so I've had a little while to fish out of this boat, and I have to say I'm really impressed with it. Um, it's really a stable platform to fish in, and it has a lot of great features. While it's a basic setup, the features are really well thought out and are made of quality parts, which really helps make this kayak a lot of, uh, a lot of fun to fish out of. First and foremost is the front hatch. Now, while yes, many kayaks have front hatches, uh, this particular hatch comes with a bag inside. Some may refer to it as a ditty bag. Um, some manufacturers allow you to buy a ditty bag separate for the hatch. This one's included in the price of the kayak. I really like it for keeping my bag of rain gear accessible in there. And I can still keep items underneath it. And that bag also helps keep the important items from sliding down your kayak if you're pulling it up a hill or, or you know, while transporting it, you don't have anything falling through the kayak. Uh, in addition to around the front hatch, we have four tie-down points. Um, that's really neat for tying additional items. Uh, some people like to put bungee across their hatch. Uh, what I may do with this one is run a line across and somewhere to keep my paddle blade stowed while I'm fishing. We all heard of Yak Attack and they make great gear tracks. Uh, these are no exception. These are their top load gear tracks. There's about a 16 or an 18 inch piece on each side. I believe these are 18. It uh, really allows you to push your yak attack or rail fitted items exactly where you want them the first time while having to slide it in on the end and readjust it. Um, very cool concept. These are made of aluminum, so these are nice and sturdy, unlike the plastic ones which may wear over time. Uh, that can also be said about the rails on our foot pegs. Uh, the foot pegs are usually adjustable by lifting the bar and you can slide it where you want it and it locks into place. But the rails that the foot pegs sit on are aluminum. Many kayak manufacturers use plastic, and those over time will warp or crack, and you'll even see them start to bend when you apply pressure with your feet when you're getting a good paddle stroke in. With the aluminum tracks, the foot pegs feel nice and sturdy. They don't feel like they're bending or moving on you, and it really allows you to keep a good form while on the water. Uh, my favorite aspect about this kayak is the wide open cockpit with the raised design on it. While the raised design is really cool looking, it also serves as a great platform uh, that you won't slip on because water can easily drain out to the scuppers because of the raised sections of the logo. Uh, in addition, a nice wide open platform uh, allows you the room to stretch out. You can keep additional gear in front of you um, and it really gives you a lot of room to work, which I greatly appreciate in the kayak. There's also these two pre-threaded um, inserts here in the front to allow you to attach other items without actually having to drill into your kayak. So again, well, some of these features are very basic. Uh, the way they're made and the way they're thought out are really uh, of exceptional standard, and I really appreciate the quality that went into this boat. Now let's check out the back. Okay, so the options don't just end in the front. Uh, the rear of the kayak has a lot of great thought going into it as well. First and foremost are two flush-mounted rod holders with these caps. Some people love them, some people hate them. 
I like flush mount rod holders because they're not only great for rods, but I can keep a net in there or a pair of pliers within reach. And if you don't want to use them, you can really just close the covers and they're there for aesthetics. Um, I enjoy these. Uh, the way they're set up, they don't stick out too far to the side. You don't have to worry about your inshore guys getting the rods caught in the mangrove. That was well thought out as well. In addition, we have another hatch here. It's about a six inch hatch. With a locking lid and also has a bag inside. That's great for your smaller personal items. Just like the front, you have the top load gear track in the back. You have this nice bungee and you have this nice clip here, uh, which is great for tying down your crate or your black pack or whatever, your cooler or whatever else you may keep in the back. Uh, there's a cutout here for your cooler. It's rectangular in shape. I'd also be curious to see uh, if a black pack will fit a uh, long ways in here, but there's a lot of ample storage space in the rear of the kayak. And one of the key features about this kayak was actually first seen on their stand-up paddleboard, the Kahuna, is this area right here. This is made to accept a bracket for a power pole. Uh, for any of the kayak anglers out there who like to use shallow water anchor power poles, you can put your face right here. There's threads pre-drilled through. Uh, this way you can attach it and unattach it, no problem. Uh, or if you don't want to go with the shallow water uh, anchor, this kayak is also made and set up to accept the rudder. So there's a lot of key features on this kayak that have really enabled them to ensure that regardless of what type of fishing you do, this kayak can really ensure that you're properly outfitted for those adventures. Another key feature I want to touch on is this aggressive front. Uh, when this kayak was designed, they really wanted to ensure that the front was aggressive enough to handle the chop and prevent water from coming over the side. Now one thing I will say, it looks really sharp, it looks nice and fast, and I'd be curious to see exactly how this boat handles even offshore. Uh, 12 and a half feet, it may be a little short, but I may take it out anyway just to see how well this front handles, because it looks like she cut through the water pretty good. So really a fantastic design for this kayak and I'm really happy with it. Well, like I said, anglers, I really am enjoying fishing out of this kayak and uh, if it's okay with you, I'm going to end this conversation and get back out on the water. But if you're looking for a terrific kayak that's not going to break the bank, it's going to give you a lot of really neat, well thought out features that's great for inshore as well as fresh water, lakes, and I would even say rivers. I invite you to check out the Kaku Wahoo uh, at 12 and a half feet and 74 pounds. It also is a great portable kayak to take to some of your favorite waters. So give them a shout and uh, tell them the Florida Bass Teller sent you and let's see if we can get some fish in the boat. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Tight lines, everybody.
get some more information on this kayak, uh, go ahead and visit kakukayak.com and uh, hopefully I'll have some more adventures in this kayak because again, I really like fishing out of it. So thanks for watching and uh, please subscribe and if you want to see some different content or anything, just give me a shout below or uh, shoot me a message and uh, I'll see what I can do. Fat lines everybody, thanks for watching.